Hello there, algebraics. I'm trying something new with this whole, uh, um, if, you're a, if you're a student of the algebras, then you are an algebraic. Maybe that's not funny to you, I don't know. But anywho, um, this is an Algebra 2 video, and it is chapter four, section six, the quadratic formula and the discriminant. And we're going to get started first and foremost with the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula does require that you know how to complete the square. And so I am going to show you how um, the quadratic formula is actually derived from the, um, from the standard form by completing the square. So all we're going to do today is complete the square. And after we've done that, we're going to end up with a formula. And then we're going to be able to use that formula to solve any quadratic. It's going to be so amazing. A um, couple of things that you should know is I always require um, at some point on a quiz or a test that you be able to complete the square yourself without using any notes. Um, and so you want to be able to do this process on your own because it will be extra credit. And I don't give very many of those opportunities, so um, it would be of you to, to know how to do this. And then secondly, we're gonna learn a little song later on how you can memorize the quadratic formula. And everybody always loves it. So we know that one of the first things we wanna do when we are completing the square, is to divide everything by the coefficient of x squared, which in this case is a. So I'm just gonna divide everything by a. When I do that, I am going to get um, x squared by itself, and then plus, um, Oops, my bad. Plus blah, 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 blah. Okay. Plus B over A X plus sorry, I try to keep my colors here um, right for you. So we're gonna get B over A X plus C over A, and of course zero divided by anything is zero. So now we have that. The second step, if you remember, and we could interchange them, the second step was to move the constant, and remember the constant is basically the term that has no variable, and I know that right now you're looking at this and going, oh, everything has a variable. Well, our variable is x, so we've got x here, we've got x there, but we have no x here. This is my constant. So that little guy needs to move to the other side. So we're gonna go x squared. We have our little blank, and then this is gonna be, um, negative, okay? So we have that there, that there. We're gonna put that there, and that there, okay. So we're gonna get x squared plus b over ax. Then we have our little blank, and we like to put that there so that we know, can remind us that we're going to fill that in later. And then we get the negative c over a goes to the other side. So now we have that over there. Okay, so now the next step, if you remember, is to take the middle term, which is b over a, and divide it by two. And if you divide by two, when you've got a fraction, then you have to divide by two. It's actually easier if you flip it over and multiply. So that's gonna be um, b, over a times, instead of dividing by two, we're gonna multiply by one half, okay? And then that's going to give us b divided by two a, okay? So now we've got b divided by two a. Um, and so if you remember, after you divide, so that's just the first step. I know it, it seems kind of weirder when you have a lot of letters going on, but um, the, for the third step required us to take the middle term divided by two. So now I've done that and I've gotten this. Our next step is to square the result. So I am going to now square this. Now remember that in our video from before, I reminded you that um, the, it is very important that we keep track of this guy right here. This is what we're gonna use for the factor form if you remember from, from the video from before that after you divide by two, that number is going to be what we're gonna put in our factored form. So we'll do that. 
Um, but first, we're going to now um, get our answer. We're going to get b squared. Because of it, we're squaring this, we're going to square the 2 until 2 squared is 4. And then you're going to get a squared. So you get b squared over 4a squared after you square it. Okay? And if you remember, after we've done that, you're going to add this number or this, this uh, amount to both sides. So now we're going to put over here plus b squared, oops, divided by 4a squared onto both sides plus b squared over 4 a squared. So we're adding our results. So just to be clear again, okay, divide everything by a. Subtract the constant to the other side. Take the middle term, divide it by 2, which gave us this. Square the result. Gave us b squared over 4 a squared. Add that result to both sides of the equal sign. And now we've basically completed the square. So our job now is to write this in the factored form. And to do that, again, if you remember, we're going to write it like this, x plus something squared. And the something is going to be, I probably need more space, probably a little too close there, I need more space. Um, the something that we're going to be adding there is the number before we squared it. So the b over 2a. b over 2a goes right in there. Now for the right hand side, we have to kind of put these two together. Okay, and what you want to do is kind of combine them into one fraction. Um, and when you combine two fractions when you're adding, you have to have a common denominator. And so this denominator is 4a squared, and this one is only a. So I need to multiply this fraction by a 4 to get the 4, and by an a to get the a squared. So I'm going to do that now. Multiply this guy by 4 divided by a. Okay? So that's kind of tight there. So 4 divided by a. Okay? Um, sorry, I don't know why I did that. That's not right. I want to multiply the top by 4a, not divided by a, and the bottom also by 4a. Don't forget that it's negative, okay? So when I do that, I get 4a c plus b squared all divided by 4a squared. So I'll go back and make sure that you understood that. So basically I need to multiply top and bottom by 4a because the bottom needs to be 4a squared so that I can have a common denominator. 4 times a times a will give me 4a squared and 4a squared. So once you have a common denominator, you can go ahead and add the tops and then the bottom denominator stays the same. So it is important to remember that it was negative 4ac. This was a negative from the get-go because we had subtracted the c over a, but it kind of got lost there. So I wanted you to make sure that this is negative 4ac plus b squared. And that's when I have negative 4ac plus b squared all divided by 4a squared. The next thing, so now we've completed the square. It's all factored. The next thing we have to do is actually solve for x. So we are now going to square root um, both sides. And we're going to square root the top and square root the bottom, okay? So the square root and the square are going to cancel and you're going to get x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus, whenever you square root something you want to put plus or minus. I'm sorry that my phone is ringing over here. I'm going to try to turn that off for you there, sorry. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is just because I don't like starting with a negative, I'm going to rearrange this so that it says um, plus or minus square root 
we're going to go b squared minus 4a c all divided by, okay, so what I've done here is I put the b squared first, so I'm just changing the order around, not a big deal, plus or minus, I took the square root of both sides, and here the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of a squared is a. So now we have the square root on top doesn't cancel, don't try to cancel with the b squared, you can't cancel that when there's a minus in the middle here. So in this case it's okay because you're not subtracting or adding, you're multiplying, but in this case you can't cancel it. So now we're here. And we want to subtract, now we want to solve for x, we want to subtract the b divided by 2a from both sides. So subtract that little guy. And we're going to finally almost get to our answer. So now when you add those up, you're going to get x equals, and you have um, negative b divided by 2a. Then you have plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Hello. all divided by 2a. And now what you should notice is that both of these, this is, again, we have a fraction adding a fraction. And now what's cool about it, though, is that you have the same denominator. So we can actually combine these two fractions into one, and then that will be our final answer. And so I'm going to write that over here because I don't have any more space. So we're going to say x equals um, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a c all divided by 2a. And believe it or not, this little guy right here is the quadratic formula. And the little song, you can basically sing it to Jingle Bells. Don't make fun of me, but it basically goes like this. X equals negative B plus or minus radical B squared minus 4AC all divided by 2A. So there you go. Um, there's also another one that goes X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. That one's not as fun. So I prefer the first. So X equals negative B plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So that's the quadratic formula. And now, remember, you're going to have to be able to do it yourself um, on a quiz or test if you want extra credit. Um, and then we're going to use that to solve um, now all kinds of quadratics. It doesn't matter what kind of quadratic we're going to We're going to solve all kinds of them. So now we're going to use that formula. And we're going to do an example. It says here, solve x squared minus 10 equals 11 by using the quadratic formula. Now that we know what it is, we can actually use it. So here we go. x squared minus 10x. First thing you want to do is actually make it equal to 0. And right now it says equal to 11. So I need to subtract the 11 to the other side. So I get that. And then I have to identify what a, b, and c are. So a is 1, b is negative 10, and c is negative 11. Now, according to the quadratic formula, you're going to get x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4 times a times c, and then all divided by 2a. So I have all these parentheses so that I know that I'm going to replace those with the a, b, and c from here. So the first thing is x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And that's how you can remember it, see? It actually helps. And then all we have to do is simplify the answer. So negative, negative makes it a positive 10. Remember that when you square a negative number, it becomes positive. This is 100 minus, and then 4 times 1 times negative 11 is negative 44. So minus negative 44 is plus 44. 
So you get 144 divided by 2, which now becomes 10 plus or minus the square root of 144 is 12 divided by 2. So you get 10 plus 12 divided by 2, and you also get 10 minus 12 divided by 2. 10 plus 12 is going to be 22 divided by 2, which is 11. And 10 minus 12 is going to be negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. So your two solutions for this example are negative 1 and positive 11. And so now you can try these two do-it-yourself questions in much the same way. And then we're just going to keep going um, to try to do more examples. I'm going to warn you right now that due to the um, quadratic formula part, we will probably have to um, do this video in two parts. But um, I'll try really hard to, to not let that happen. But here we go. So now we'll do the quadratic formula again. It's already equal to 0. A equals 1. B equals 8. C equals 16. So now we're going to go x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So now we're going to get negative 8 plus or minus 8 squared is 64. This is 64. And then 4 times 1 times 16. 4 times 1 times 16 is also 64. So you get 64 minus 64, which is now 0 over 2. Well, the square root of 0 is 0, so all you're going to get is negative 8 divided by 2, which is negative 4. So what actually ends up happening here is that because, because um, you got a 0 underneath the square root, that means that you're only going to have one rational root. And that, in, like in the previous case, we ended up with two answers, two rational roots. And again, a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction, so all our normal numbers, fractions included, um, and our integers. Um, and so now I want you to try this do-it-yourself question. In the next example, we're going to end up with um, irrational roots. And remember, irrational roots are things that cannot be written as fractions. They're square roots of 2, square roots of 3. They have decimals that go on forever. And so sometimes you can get that also when you have the quadratic formula. But the cool thing about it is that the quadratic formula will always work. Unlike factoring, which only works sometimes, the quadratic formula works all the time. So now we have a equals 2, b equals 6, and c equals negative 7. So here we go. x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Okay, so now um, 6 squared is 36, and 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times negative 7 is negative 56. So we have um, minus a negative, that's going to be plus, so it's 30, 36 plus 56, and 36 plus 56 is 92. So negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 92 over 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. Now the 92, we're going to try to break down. And it turns out the 92 is 4 times 23. And the square root of 4 is 2. So now we get negative 6 plus or minus um, 2 root 23 over 4. And the um, root 23 here does not break down any further to prime number. So this is what we're left with. But we know that um, 2 goes into all of these numbers. Um, and so we're going to reduce that. Um, 2 goes into negative 6 3 times. 2 goes into 2 once. And 2 goes into 4 twice. So we're going to get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 23 all divided by 2. Um, this is um, sufficient for your answer. This is called irrational roots because the square root of 23 is a decimal. So we just leave the answer like that. Now if you want, you can go negative 3 divided by 2 plus or minus the square root of 23 divided by 2. Like separate them like that. Um, but you don't have to. You can leave it like this. So now I want you to try to do it yourself number 3, A and B. And then we go to example 4. And in example 4, we're going to end up with... Um, 
imaginary roots. And lucky for us, we already know how to do that from before. Um, we know how to deal with um, imaginary numbers, so it shouldn't be a big deal. But this guy needs to get in the right form, x squared minus 6x. I'm going to move the 10 over here. Plus 10 equals settle. And so A equals 1, B equals negative 6, and C equals 10. So here we go. X equals negative B plus or minus radical B squared minus 4AC, all divided by 2A. So I want you to notice a couple of things why I did negative B. Because B is already negative, it made it into a positive. Also, I went ahead and went B squared. I know that negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. So I went ahead and already put that in there. So 4 times 10 is 40. So you're going to get 36 minus 40. And that's going to give you negative 4. So now we have 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 divided by 2. And now that we understand how to deal with the square root of a negative number from our previous lesson, then we can write that as 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2, and then you have an i because of the negative over 2. And again, 2 is into both 6 and 2, so our final answer will be 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 2 divided by 2 is i. 3 plus or minus i. So in the case where you have a negative underneath the square root, that's when you have two imaginary solutions. Okay, so now I want you to try to do yourself number 4, and then we're going to summarize um, what we've just determined with the previous examples. Um, in example one, we got two rational solutions because this was a perfect square number, okay? Um, or, and it was positive, it wasn't negative. It was a positive number and it was a perfect square, so we got two nice um, solutions. In example two, because we got a zero, we only had one rational solution. In example three, we had a number that was positive, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't a perfect square, so we ended up with two irrational solutions. And then in example four, we ended up with a negative number, and therefore got two complex solutions. And so here, we're just summarizing that. Um, and we're wanting to talk about what we call the discriminant. You can actually determine all of this stuff based on the discriminant. And the discriminant, I want to be very clear, is only the portion of the formula that is underneath the house. So b squared minus 4ac, that's the discriminant. The rest of it is just the formula. So you don't have to plug into everything. When they ask you to evaluate the discriminant, you only need to plug into b squared minus 4ac. And over here, we have generalized for you um, all of the scenarios that we just talked about um, in the previous um, examples, that if the discriminant is positive, greater than zero, and happens to be a perfect square, then you're going to get two real rational solutions. If it's positive, but it's not a perfect square, you're still going to get two real solutions, but they're not going to be rational. They're going to be irrational, like the square root of 23 earlier. Um, what does the graph look like? Because the solutions are basically like the x-intercepts. So you see that a graph will look something like this, and you'll have two places where the graph crosses. That's what the two solutions represent. Then you have the case where b squared minus 4 ac, the discriminant, is equal to zero, like in example two, I believe. And in that case, you're only going to get one real rational solution. And that looks like this. It only crosses the, it doesn't cross the x-axis, but it kind of touches the x-axis, and it comes back down. So that's what, you, that's what it looks like when you have one real solution. Um, and then, of course, the case where it's negative. And if the discriminant is negative, you get two complex or imaginary solutions. And that's because that graph will look like this. And basically, the graph never crosses the x-axis. So it would make sense that it wouldn't actually have a real solution. It's an imaginary solution. So now we want you to apply um, the discriminant. I think this is our last example. Um, we want to apply the discriminant here. And it says, to find the value of the discriminant, first and foremost, so we're going to do that first. Um, a equals 7, B equals negative 11, and C equals 5. So the discriminant is just the B squared minus 4AC part. So 11 squared is 121. 4 times 7 times 5 is 140. 
So 121 minus 140 is negative 19. Because the discriminant is negative 19, they want us to then describe the number and type of roots. So the number is going to be 2, and because this is negative, there are going to be two complex solutions, all right, for part A, two complex solutions. And then we're going to go to part B, and it's, again, we want to do A equals 1, B equals 22, and C equals 121. So in this case, if we're going to do um, B squared minus 4AC. So 22 squared is 484, and 4 times 1 times 121 is also 484, so you get 0. And because your discriminant was 0, that means you're going to get one real solution. Okay? You're not going to get any um, irrational or any um, imaginary. All right? So that's how you do that. That's how you use a discriminant to determine the number and type of roots. So now I want you to do it yourself number five. And that's your last example. So once you have done that, you have completed your notes for this lesson. And I will see you in class. And thank you for watching.